G'day everybody, uh, Adam Sellers from The Pressure Project. This is video number two, uh, all about being positive through this coronavirus, um, doing things that are good for you, doing things that bolster your immune system. Um, so yeah, today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a few more um, breathing exercises. So yesterday, in the first video, we went through uh, alternate nostril breathing, which I had some good feedback on, some people used it already. Um, ads from my uh, little freediving group has already used it, said it helped his statics, which is holding your breath and being still. Um, so thanks for that feedback. So today we're gonna add two more, and then I'm just gonna go through a little um, stretching slash yoga repertoire. My disclaimer is, is I'm not your yoga teacher. This is just something that I've done this morning and um, by all means you can use as well. So um, yesterday, so I went through the alternate nostril breathing, which is great for focus, great for activating the diaphragm. Got to close down your eyes, breathe through your nose uh, and just belly breathe whilst lengthening your exhale. That stimulates the vagus nerve, which puts you in the parasympathetic nervous system, which means your immune system's nice and strong, which as I said yesterday, is our only line of defense um, at the moment because we have no cure uh, for this or vaccination. So like I said yesterday, um, I can't come up with a cure. I can't come up with a vaccination. I was terrible at science in school. So that's definitely not gonna come from yours truly. Um, so there's no point worrying. All I can do is make sure my immune system's nice and strong. So this morning, um, what I'm gonna run through quickly is uh, three breathing exercises that um, not only help with activating your um, parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest, digest, and regenerate system, which keeps you nice and strong. Um, it also helps with CO2 tolerance. Now, CO2 tolerance helps obviously with free divers because we build CO2 and we hold our breath, but full stop for any athlete or anyone who just wants to feel better. Um, when you do exercise, you build CO2, um, carbon dioxide. So when you start to exercise, um, basically the reason we start to go, <laughs> which is a form of hyperventilation, is we're trying to get rid of that buildup of CO2 because of exercise. So doing little breath hold exercises um, or exercises where you build CO2 means you build tolerance to it. But you also, especially if you start to do some breath holding exercises, um, it's a form of um, simulated altitude training. So a lot of free diving stuff, like the stuff we do in the pool, um, is like simulated um, altitude training. Um, but it's better in a way, like there's a lot of sporting teams that fly over to, you know, countries overseas that are at altitude, which is great. But as soon as they come back to sea level, they lose it. So, in fact, what they say the best scenario is, is live at altitude, train at sea level, because you can train harder at sea level, but you pick up the benefits of living high. But if you can't do that, if you can't live in the mountains somewhere, um, like most of us here in Australia, um, something like free diving training, breath hold training is, is our best option. And because we can do it at sea level, we keep it. A lot of these sporting teams, they go to altitude as soon as they come back to, you know, sea level, they lose it within, I don't know the exact time, but it might be a couple of weeks. So um, free diving training um, is, is the closest thing we can get to um, altitude training and it means that you actually create more hemoglobin in the blood which which is the oxygen carrying component of our blood um, I did read a study somewhere where cancer um, can't live in cells with high oxygenation um, so yeah it's 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 an interesting world but high oxygenation in the blood which means if you can increase your hemoglobin by doing these um, exercises or breath holding stuff or free diving um, it means that you know you've got a fighting chance against viruses, disease, etc., etc. Um, and as I said, the CO2 tolerance is another good, good way of fighting all sorts of things. I found um, I used to have asthma, and and I found just through my freediving stuff, I just don't get it anymore. Um, now I'm not a doctor; I have no scientific papers behind this, but I can just tell you, my asthma used to kick up in change of seasons 
I just get none of it because my CO2 tolerance is so high now with free diving and I carry more hemoglobin in the blood. So I just find I'm just, my cardiovascular system is so much stronger now. Anyway, we're gonna get into it. So the first one we're gonna do is just our alternate nostril breathing. So relaxing the shoulders down. If you wanna be a yogi, obviously, to the third eye, thumb and finger or pistol grip. Okay. So, we're just going to start in through the left. Only belly breathing, out through the right. Let go of the rest of your body, in through the right. Out through the left. In through the left. out through the right. Now do that for at least three or four minutes. So pause this video and go through it. Um, the next one though, after this, so when you, when you press play again, we're gonna do triangular breath. Now what I would suggest for people who haven't done this before is do this laying down, okay? So triangular breath is like a triangle, okay? Now to begin with, you may not have that many seconds in terms of when you breathe in, but the triangle is like this. All through the nose, belly breathing with long exhales is in on the first side of the triangle. So let's say you do six seconds in. Then what we wanna do is hold our breath for six seconds on the other part of the triangle. Then exhale for six seconds, nice and slow and so on and so forth. So it will look a little bit like this, just my belly breathing. That's the inhale, hold for the same amount of time. And exhale for the same amount of time. and so on and so forth. So that's triangular breath. So do that as well for a few minutes. And then once you come off pause, we're gonna go through the next one, um, which is square breathing. So uh, once again, uh, very similar, except we've added a side. So square, one, two, three, four, okay? So with this, this time, um, you're gonna inhale, let's say it's four seconds this time, because this one's a bit tougher. Inhale, let's say four seconds, right? Hold your breath for four seconds. Exhale for four seconds. And then hold your breath on empty lungs. I mean, they're never fully empty, but on empty lungs for four seconds and go again. Once again, let's like start laying down with this one because if you don't do any breath work um, to date, this one can definitely be tough and we don't want you falling over on the ground. Okay, so just laying down doing this. So this time, very similar again. Except we're adding a side. All right, so through the nose, let go of the shoulders, just belly breathing. We're gonna go in. Hold. Out. Hold. In. Hold. Out. Hold. 
all in. So, what you'll find with these as well is that as you go along, like you might start off where your inhales um, and your exhales and your holding and all that sort of stuff may only be four seconds. Through your isolation period, um, you may find by the end, you may double that, you may triple that um, where you feel comfortable because you've started to get some CO2 tolerance, you're starting to get more comfortable, you're starting to get more flexibility through the thoracic region as well. Um, because we very rarely work on that region, we very rarely work on our breath. But oxygen is absolutely everything to us, so why don't we? And the other great thing about breath work is that it's something that, it's really the only thing in that human body that we uh, will happen unconsciously, like we will breathe whether we like it or not. Um, like even if a bouncer chokes you out or something, once you come back, not that that's ever happened to me, but once you come back, um, you're just, you're, you, your body or your brain will just send messages to the diaphragm, etc. our breathing muscles to just start breathing again. So it'll happen unconsciously, but it's also something that we can affect consciously, minute by minute, second by second, day by day. Like right now, if I wanted to, I can start hyperventilating. I can affect my um, pH in my blood. I can affect how much oxygen, how much CO2 I'm purging out, which please don't get me wrong, I'm not an advocate for hyperventilation at all. I'm actually the opposite. So a lot of the breathing techniques out there at the moment are, are all about rapid fire breathing and jumping in ice and all the rest of it, um, which has its benefits, but um, I, I feel like there's a little bit too much of hyperventilation at the moment, which is just, hyperventilation by definition is speeding up the rate of your breath uh, and taking in more oxygen that's actually required. So it looks a little bit like this. <laughs> So I'm more of an advocate for the other side, slowing it down, activating the parasympathetic nervous system, getting away from our stress zone. So guys, today I'd love you to do at least three or four minutes. If you can do five minutes of each of those, so alternate nostril breathing, triangular breath, and um, square breathing, um, that's great. It's a good way to start the day, it's, uh, and it's something that will build your health, but it's also a mindfulness exercise. It's also meditation. Um, not all meditation is sitting cross-legged in a cave with butterflies flying around your head. Um, you can just change uh, the way you breathe uh, whilst also helping your fitness. These exercises, if you struggle sleeping, are great before sleep as well, I've, I've found. Um, but it also helps with free diving. Um, they're great for warm-ups beforehand. Um, so yeah, just an all round, in yoga they call it pranayama, um, the pranayama practice. But start slow, don't feel like you have to have this massive breath hold or whatever, start slow, work into it. Um, it's also, so for me, I like, I like to do my breath work stuff before doing a little bit of yoga. Um, this morning what I just did was some stretches, um, more so than than straight yoga, so I'm gonna quickly run you through a little routine which is more about relaxation. It's not a lot of um, long holds or challenging yourself. Um, but basically, um, I'll run through it now. So if you wanna pause it and do the breath work first, and then we'll go through some of, uh, a, a routine that I would do um, maybe the night before, say, comp petition or but this is very light this is sometimes just a bit of my routine in the morning so um, I'll run through it quickly now with you so I'll start with which is actually yoga so down down dog but I call it they call it like walking the dog so this is for the calves hips up to the sky pushing your heels down to the mat the calves, this is going to be a much shortened version. I'm not going to take up too much of your time, but you would do these for a little bit longer. Um, maybe up to 30 seconds or something like that. Um, I then like to do the quads 
So I do it this way because it actually gives me a bit of a stretch through the scap as well. But grab your foot, pull it to your bum, breathe through all of this, guys, in through the nose. Swapping over. Obviously, as I said, you do it for a little bit longer. You can see I really sink into this though, which gives me a stretch through my scap as well. Coming into the middle, um, this is for the hamstrings, so Pull your feet in as far as you can. Slowly sink into this one, pushing your elbows down into your legs. Breathe through this. The more you breathe, what you'll find is the more your legs can sink down. Now into our hamstring, so I like to do one where you push your leg out to the side, bring your leg in here. A lot of these ones are always straight, but I can get a hamstring as well as a lower back stretch out of this one. So if you get your elbow and put it on the inside of your leg here, and then try and make like the letter C out of it. So you won't go as deep as some of the other ones, because what I'm doing by making this C is activating a stretch in the lower back. But just breathe through this one. And then, like a yogi, you've got to make things look beautiful. So then you just sweep around. Do the other leg. Same thing. Make a C. Usually one side is a little bit more flexible or feels a bit easier than the other. I do like to do a bit of a front ways one, have a good look at my feet. Also a good idea in the morning is to get out into the earth without shoes on and um, walk around, they call it earthing, look it up. The minerals from the earth is supposed to make you feel better. So I don't know how much science is behind that. Maybe someone can tell me, but uh, just do a traditional kind of stretch here. First thing in the morning, I'm always a bit tight. I don't know about you, but if you just reach for your toes, try and relax, breathe more. Maybe you get to the point where you can reach a little bit further. So, next, what I generally do is then we'll go onto the belly and do a little bit of a, what do they call it in yoga? Like an up dog. It's a good stretch for your abdominals. So, pushing up, shoulders back, looking up. Stretching out the abs. into a down dog. Now the next one um, is for your glutes. Um, the best stretch is actually the one where you do like out in front and lean forward over and hold that stretch. But my years of footy, my knees are gone so that one doesn't work all that well for me. So the other one that uh, I would prefer is like so, put your right foot, ankle on your left knee, and then you can roll back. This is a good bum shot. Um, and you can pull that knee in. Uh, 
other side. Pull that knee in. Instead of you having the bum the whole time, I might switch over here. Um, another glutes, a good glute one, but we'll start with the back now, is pull your knee up, left leg, right hand, pull it over. Try and keep this shoulder on the ground. That's the best way to anchor in is throw your arm that way and look down your left arm whilst your left knee is pulled right over to the side. Might be better if I'm down here a bit more. If you want to go to a bit more of a glute stretch from here, you can just grab that knee and pull it to your chest. And vice versa, switching over this side. Quite often you'll get a nice little crack. And pull your leg up again if you want to do the glutes. Another good little back stretch. So we've just done, we're moving up. Obviously, as you can see, we've done the calves, we've done the quads, we've done the hemis, we've done the glutes. Um, we've just done back, so another little one as well. You can cross your right over your left, left arm onto this side. Right arm goes behind you, right back here, and look back to the wall. I've done a fair bit of yoga in my time. They say this type of stretch, like squeezes the body and like squeezes a lot of the toxins and things out of your kidneys and liver or something like that don't quote me but that's what I've heard so it must be true all right so we've given the back a good workout I do like to do some dynamic ones at this point as well so spread the legs wide start in the middle like so and just out to that foot, out to that foot, out to that foot. Start to get some blood flow into the back as well. Not a bad one. Also through the middle. So reach out in the front, reach to the middle, reach to the back, reach to the middle, out to the side, middle, side. And you can do that for a couple of minutes as well. Um, <coughs> now, um, my favorite is some of the shoulder scap stretches. A lot of people are very tight through here. Um, but one that I absolutely love is come up onto like plank. If you know it through your yoga, get your right hand, reach through and sink into your shoulder blade and hold this. Make sure you breathe. And swapping over, other hand reach through. And hold. You've got like your traditional shoulder ones which are like this. I find putting my hand, bringing it up to the ear gives a better stretch. And then the other side obviously and you've got your traditional one over the back. On this side. But the best one I feel, and there'll be some really fancy, fancy yoga name for this that I don't know. Quite often they do it standing up, they link the legs. Uh, but I find just doing the arm one is really nice. So put your left arm up like so, right arm goes underneath, and then you link them. Now this is really kind of an advanced one um, and you should feel this through the scap I breathe for about five breaths here and then I sink
So then swapping over. And sink. So that shoulder ones, um, generally for the chest, there's a few, you can grab a pole and push against the pole like that for the chest. Then you can have the pole here as well, push against. Um, neck ones I find just push one side, push the other, um, and do some stretches that way. I'm just gonna grab the roller because that's a really good one for opening up the chest. See, I'm really prepared for this. Um, so you can also do this with like a fit ball. Great for free diving, great for flexibility, um, great for opening up this region. Um, but just basically, it's just breath, but folding your back over. You can see that opens up this region, the thoracic rib cage up through the chest and just go through some big breaths. So if you can try doing this, start with your belly first and then move up to your chest. So belly rises first. Hold it for a few seconds. And then release. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little session. Um, if you were to do five minutes of the alternate nostril, five minutes of triangular, five minutes of uh, your square breath, that stretching routine should take you about half an hour. So there's 45 minutes in the morning that um, you've been extremely mindful. Even the stretching, when you count to say 25, 30 seconds, that's mindfulness. You have to be in the front part of your brain, which is your prefrontal cortex. And if you're there and you're counting, you can't be in your fear zone. So there's a half an hour of just counting and stretching um, that brings you to the present moment, takes you away from all this coronavirus stuff and the fear and anxiety that's being built into us. Um, it's also great for your body, um, stretching out obviously the muscles, getting some of the stuff working in the morning. Breath work is amazing for us. So. Um, you know, there's 45 minutes of your morning and you could do that twice a day. You could do it three times a day. Um, hope you enjoyed guys. Um, stay positive, look after each other. Um, we're going to be fine.